So I grew up in Colorado, and I grew up in a family with one brother. Um, my family was always interested in my health, and my, and my dad did a very good job of setting an example actually for the family. He exercised every day. I have memories of him coming home and riding his exercise bike while he watched the news. I'd go for walks with him. But we did grow up, like most American families, eating some fast food, steak on the grill, hamburgers on the grill, uh, German chocolate cake. My grandma made delicious cinnamon rolls. So I grew up in that kind of tradition of food. And we enjoyed our food. We thought we were healthy. But in reality, we really were not healthy uh, because we were consuming the same diet that most Americans still consume today. So I always grew up uh, in athletics. I just, I always loved to run. It's something from the very time I was uh, able to walk, I was running and I loved sports. That was just something that was, I was really passionate about. And I actually have these vague memories of, um, you know, watching the Olympics, both the summer and winter Olympics. And in the summertime, I'd go outside and I would pretend that I was sprinting in the 100 meter final. And in the winter Olympics, ironically enough, I would watch bobsledding and I would go outside with my little sled, polish up the runners, and I would dream that I was bobsledding in the Olympics in Switzerland or Austria. So it's something that I was always passionate about. And like most athletes, I was um, of the understanding that Protein was of prime importance for athletes. I ate tons of eggs, tons of steak, hamburgers, protein shakes. You know, I filled my body with protein and calories. I also had the mistaken concept that I could eat anything I want because I was burning off calories with workouts. So sure, ice cream, no problem, ice cream bars, chocolate milkshakes. I was thin, I was fit, I was healthy. I had the idea that it had no consequences for me to eat this kind of food because I looked and felt great. Uh, little did I know what it was doing to my body at that time, but I continued to eat that way all the way up through the 94 Olympics when I was competing um, and thought nothing of going to a fast food restaurant and eating two hamburgers and a couple orders of fries and a chocolate milkshake. You know, I felt like it was no consequence to my health to do so. So I think, you know, as I look back retrospectively, knowing what I know now and looking back at my understanding of nutrition as an Olympic athlete and what they served Olympic athletes and still do to this day, I still work as a physician, you know, covering Olympic events and world championships. And, you know, the food is now, it's shocking to me because I see the deficiencies. Um, it's still protein-based. It's still without the, you know, people don't understand the consequences of eating excess sugar and excess fat and excess oils. I think that athletes really don't understand the benefits of loading their body with nutrients and how that enhances their body's ability to heal. And I think one of the critical aspects for athletes is recovery. And this is often, um, I think, um, not understood by athletes, how important it is to recover so that you can maximize your performance and also maximize the next training uh, regimen. So when we look at like plant-based nutrition, um, first we have to understand for athletes, if they're consuming enough calories, they are consuming adequate protein. Um, and you know, we can understand that from the nitrogen studies and even the recommendation that most athletes need to consume 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight. If they're consuming sufficient calories, you know, four or 5,000 calories a day, just by simple food calculators, we see that they're consuming more than enough protein and they're getting a wide variety of foods that will, that will provide all of the necessary amino acids. So the protein deficiency is really um, not a, an issue for Olympic athletes. But when we look at the benefits of plant-based nutrition for athletes, um, there are a number of studies that show that the phytochemicals and antioxidants help to, to mitigate a lot of the oxidative stress, the inflammation and tissue damage that comes from a high intensity workout or an athletic performance. And it's the oxidative stress or the delayed onset muscle soreness that prevents athletes from coming back the next day and working out or performing at an optimum level. The other aspects I think that are really important that we see in, um, in athletics is, is prevention of, of illness. And so I've seen a number of athletes work and train and, and get themselves ready for the competition. And because of the stress on the body, their immune system is suppressed. And so right before a competition at a critical point, they get ill. They get an upper respiratory infection, they get a pneumonia, they get a GI bug. And now all their preparation and anticipation of that event has been for naught because a simple bug has, has prevented them from performing optimally. So we know from plant-based nutrition, it optimizes health. 
We know that sugar and all of these foods can really be a, a drag on the immune system and make you more susceptible to disease. So it's you know a number of ways that I think plant-based nutrition really optimizes the opportunity for an athlete to have the best possible performance.